Hey friends and welcome back to another video. I'm Beth, I recently finished my PhD and I make videos about science and life in academia. If that's your kind of thing then please consider subscribing, it would really help me out. It's been just over a year since I passed my PhD visa. I know, I can't believe it, the year has absolutely flown by and I cannot believe I have a PhD and I'm a doctor. Bethany Ann Webb. <laughs> But it's really got me thinking about my time as a PhD student and got me thinking about the advice that I would give to my younger self or for incoming PhD students. So I thought I would do exactly that. So let's get straight into it. Number one, accept that failure will happen. A perfect PhD doesn't exist and you will fail at some point and that's just kind of part and parcel of doing a PhD. The important thing about failure is that you learn from the failure and think about how you would have done things differently and really think about how you can move forward. So learning to fail is actually really, really important and a huge part of doing a PhD. If you accept this early on, it will save you a lot of hurt and stress in the future. And just know that failure is totally, totally okay. Some of these failures will be pretty small, some of them might be exceptionally epic, believe me, they will. And hopefully you can laugh about them in the future, even though at the time it feels awful, but it's just kind of the way it is and it's absolutely fine. For example, I spent months and months and months trying to get a singular antibody to work and it just didn't work, no matter what I did. I was on the research gate threads, I was even on Reddit, I was even on anything to try and figure out what was going on. And there just comes a point where you have to accept that it's not going to work and you need to move on. And in a lot of cases during your PhD, sometimes things just don't work and it's got nothing to do with you. It's not a reflection of you or how much work you've put in. Sometimes things just don't work and it's important to accept that and move on. Number two, create and implement a system that works for you. Your PhD is made up of many things. It's not just doing the research, it's how to do the research. So this involves file storage, organization and time management, reference management, note taking, all of these different things. And you've really got to find something that works for you. Your PhD is multifaceted. You're going to generate lots of data, lots of notes, lots of everything to be honest and you just need a system that works in a way that you can access all of these things at a later date in an easy way in a way that makes sense to you. There's nothing more infuriating than looking at some notes from something that you did like three years ago when you're writing up and you just have no idea what you've done. It's really important to take thorough notes early on and throughout your PhD so when it comes to writing up you can just make the whole process a lot easier for yourself. So really, really help future you by taking thorough notes. And on top of this, I would really use and stick to a reference management system. It doesn't really matter what you use, just use something that works for you and something that you find easy to use. For example, I use EndNote. I know EndNote gets a lot of hate and it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's what worked for me and it was what my university supported. So I opted for that. I would also suggest to stick with that system and not change. I tried to change reference management systems partway through my PhD and it was very stressful. So please don't do that. It's not worth it. Find one that works for you and stick with it. Number three, allow yourself to be receptive to change. Change goes hand in hand with failure. When failure happens, sometimes change happens or sometimes change happens and failure happens. You have to really allow yourself to be receptive to these things and kind of accept that these things will happen. If you think about it, your PhD is probably gonna be a series of lots of major changes and a lot of that's driven by your research or other factors as well. For example, there was a whole body of work in my PhD that we just weren't able to do and that was because of time and resources and because of that it actually changed the title of my thesis and PhD project and that was something that I never thought would happen and it was a little bit weird and there was also another point where we thought my entire PhD project was going to take a totally different direction thankfully it didn't but sometimes these things do you have to really just be receptive to these kind of changes it is hard and it's probably not going to be very fun when you're when you're in that moment 
but allowing yourself to be flexible within your research can allow you to be receptive to all sorts of changes. Number four, set expectations with your supervisor or supervisory team. Every single PhD student works differently and so do their supervisors or supervisory team. It's really important to set these expectations early on in terms of what your supervisor can expect from you and what you can expect from your supervisor. This can be down to how often you meet to what kind of support you'll need throughout your PhD. Obviously your needs may change and that's absolutely fine, but having that open line of communication with your supervisory team is really important and it stands you in good stead for the future. Number five, diversify your skill set. A PhD is all about learning and essentially you want to be a sponge. You want to learn and take all the opportunities that you can get. Within reason though, we don't want to overwork ourselves, but starting to diversify your skills early on can really help you. For example, if you want to learn a particular technique, speak to people in your institute, find out who does that. Nine times out of 10, people will be happy to help you. At the end of your PhD, you really want to have a breadth of skills. So being able to diversify your skills early on is really important. Your first year is a great time for that because you're not necessarily doing a huge amount for your actual research and research project. It's generally a lot of training and learning and understanding and planning your project. So you will have time to learn these things. That's not to say you can't diversify your skills later on, but I definitely recommend it early on. And you never know, it might help you in your way of approaching your research. Number six, your PhD is what you make of it. When I used to think about my PhD experience and what advice I would give to PhD students, I often used to say, you get out what you put in. But since doing my PhD and finishing my PhD and looking back on that, especially doing it in the pandemic, I don't think it's necessarily fair to say that you get out what you put in because sometimes you can put in so much hard work and it doesn't necessarily pay off. And that's not to start you off on a negative note, it's just to recognise that that's not necessarily a fair statement. So what I would say is that a PhD is exactly what you make of it. It's yours, you're getting a PhD for you and your career prospects and what you wanna do. So it's what you make of it. It's really about your own expectations and when problems arise or things go wrong, it's how you learn from that and how you move forward. And ultimately that is really what makes a PhD. Number seven, get involved in your research community and connect with other PhD students. A PhD can be quite isolating and a bit of a lonely experience. Believe me, I did the majority of my PhD in the pandemic. I know just how lonely a PhD can be. And we're not in the pandemic anymore. And hopefully we don't have another one. I would advise you get involved with your research community, connect with other PhD students and seek mentorship. It can be really nice to hear other people's perspectives, especially people that understand exactly what you're going through and how the academic world works and what it's like to do a PhD. If you're on a PhD programme, then I would suggest connecting and reaching out to fellow members of your cohort, because when you have a friend on your side during your PhD, it makes things miles better. Number eight, use all the resources available to you. You'd be really surprised at how many free resources universities and institutes have in order to help you with your research and your PhD project. I recommend utilising any of these, whether that is a course to learn R or a course to improve your public speaking or whether it's to attend or participate in a journal club, any of these things will be really useful to you and your PhD project. So I'd really recommend looking at what's available and seeing what fits in with your research and seeing the areas in which you think you would like to improve. Utilize all of these, there's so many out there, take advantage of it. For example, during my PhD, I attended virtual writing retreats online and that was really good. It really helped me keep accountable when it came to writing and I also met other PhD students, which is great. I definitely needed that. And I didn't even know that was a thing until I was in my final year of my PhD. So don't do that. Find out what's available to you early on. Number nine, treat it like a job. This is a really firm boundary that I set during my PhD. A PhD is essentially an apprenticeship you're learning and working on the job, so I would highly recommend treating it like a job. For me, I worked Monday to Friday, nine till five. 
thereabouts. Obviously it was quite flexible in terms of timing but I tried my best not to work on a weekend. I absolutely did not go in the labs on a weekend. Any work that I did during the weekend was more admin or writing related and that was primarily towards the end of my PhD when I was writing my thesis but for the most part I never worked e evenings or weekends and I think that's really important. It's really important that you have a life outside your PhD and you take the time that you need to not be working so I'd really recommend treating it like a job. Obviously a PhD is really flexible so it's entirely up to you how you manage your time and again this is something that you can set those expectations with your supervisor and generally see what other people in your group are doing but I do think if you treat it like a job you're generally going to have a better work-life balance and I think that's really important throughout the PhD process. And that brings me on to my final bit of advice. So number 10 take time off, plan vacations, plan holidays, it's really really important. Rest is productive and generally just having a life outside your research and your PhD project is so important. Taking time off can give you that distance that you might need from your research and doing something else like going abroad, spending time with friends and family, when you're not constantly engaging in your research it gives you more clarity when you come back in order to help you with your research so I would say that rest is super productive and having that time away is really important. I think about one of my favourite times that I had off during my PhD was when I went to Scotland to the Scottish Hebrides with my partner for his birthday and it was amazing. We had five days on the Isle of Isla, beautiful scenery, absolute peace and quiet, a bit of whiskey, no phone signal, you could see all of the stars at night, it was absolutely stunning and it completely made me switch off and take that time away from my research so that when I came back I was able to really hit the ground running in my final year of my PhD. There we have it, they are my top 10 tips for first year PhD students. I feel like I have loads more rattling around in this brain so I will definitely do more videos on this if you would like. If you found this useful then please let me know in the comments and if you're a first year PhD student let me know what you're doing, I'd love to hear about it. Don't forget to subscribe if you like videos like this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!